Hello and welcome back to the Fire Emblem playthrough. Me, the Jelly Monkey. And me, Spin the Crusader. Last time, a bunch of shamans decided to kidnap a girl and now we're saving her. Sorry if I'm sounding a little shaky, it's been a while since we've done this commentary and it's also been a while since I've looked at this footage. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it actually has been a while since we did this commentary. I think yeah. it's had my... Well, actually, yes, I have had my birthday. I don't know why I would think I had my birthday. <laughs> uh, oh, it all goes by in a flash. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hell, technically, even I've had my birthday. <laughs> uh, anyway. Actually, I think I had my birthday before we did the last one. Anyway, I'm... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did. Anyway. Yeah, we're currently raving now. <coughs> so, shamans getting their ass kicked. Yeah, pretty much. And, yeah, this mission basically introduces you to shamans, and the reason why I'm having Florida taking care of them is because, like I said last time, there's a special condition that's unlocked if you beat this in under 15 turns, and the other guys up there are going to take a while because... It's a very small, very cramped space, and their movement is limited by the mountains, which means they all just get bunched up in one place. Yeah. Oh, those legendary bottlenecks. You can use them to your advantage if you're not on a strict time limit. Yeah. But unfortunately, we are, so... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in a bit of a hurry here. Yeah, so... We're just sending Ked up there to spam this guy in the head. <laughs> And he misses! What?! <laughs> wow, 83%. Although, I've missed on 99 before. Yeah. And yeah. 96 is like, like that one time that I said in my debut how my Gilliam and yeah. Fire Emblem 8 missed four times in a row on a 96. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm still amazed by that, frankly. Yeah. On a zombie, how do you mess a zombie? <laughs> Uh, I see it scarred your memory then. <laughs> I will never forget it. That was the worst instance of missing I've ever seen. Four times in a row. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say we should probably get back, back to the topic, but frankly, since, <laughs> like I said, it's just a bunch of units getting stuffed, expect us to g ramble on about completely unrelated stuff in this part. <laughs> Well, it could be worse. I could be talking about, I don't know, all the games I've been playing for my birthday, but that is completely <laughs> unrelated, so no. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> and, oh yes, we're now going to visit this guy in the village who gives us a special item known as Pure Water, which basically increases resistance for a short amount of time to any unit that doesn't have it. Yeah, and frankly... If you train your units well, it is the most useless item you can possibly get. Pretty much. Also, if you're a good strategist, you wouldn't really charge at a magic user with a guy who is pretty weak to it anyways. Yeah, that's kind of basic Fire Emblem logic. <laughs> I mean, you've got your spellcasters and you've also got people like Florida. Why the hell would you send a berserker up to take him on his yeah, you you don't send someone with zero resistance to take on a magic user. It just doesn't happen unless you are really, really desperate or really, really tactically um, challenged. <laughs> That's or you just really like seeing the um, player comments when you uh, get a lag <laughs> Yeah, for those of you who don't know what you're, uh, I'm talking about, uh, at the end of the game, you get ranked according to how well you did, such as rank A, rank B, rank C, etc. Not only do uh, you get how history recorded you, but um, you also get this um, really odd... You also get one of the um, characters saying things like, What the hell were you thinking? Right next to your rank in later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be worth it just for the humor. Yeah. Although I am never going to do it because I'm not that desperate. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, and now we've taken down another mercenary. I really hate those guys. I'm so. <laughs> hey, look, someone with a good hit chance. Yay! <laughs> I gotta love Matthew. I'm so totally not a fanboy of him. <laughs> uh, 
Well, maybe it's a self I don't know what it is about the Feast Sprite, but everything they do looks like badass on some level. Their dodging looks badass, their just standing still looks badass generally. Yeah, and their critical is so impossible, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, what? You mean they just floated in midair whilst wildly slashing? Yeah. Like, like, not even a berserker could beat that. True, although then again, the uh, mercenaries, cocky bastards as they are, their critical is pretty impossible. I mean, okay, catching the sword in midair, fine, but catching the sword in midair and then spinning, that's just it. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. I think you're very much right. They're a bunch of show-offs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. There is a... Like I said before, there is just something about the mercenary that puts me off in the wrong way. It's just... I don't know what it is. It's just like the uh, really cockiness of their sprite. The fact that they just stand there with the sword casually over them. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I'm Cloud Strife wielding the sword with one hand. <sighs> okay, I have no idea why I'm taking to long on to edit that. But anyway... Yes. He gave us time to ramble. <laughs> <laughs> yep, this is Heinz. Don't get attached to him. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? You cut out a bit. Um, there we go. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, that's about all you can say about all the soldier A's in this game. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because Heinz really isn't that big of a threat. He's basically like one step up from the other guys who've been fighting up till. Yeah, he does one more damage and has a slightly higher hit chance. Woo! Yay! And so I want to max out as, as much experience as I can get from this. So yeah, I'm having the Florida in the fire range of two shamans. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, it's not like they're gonna do anything to her. That's true. Unless they get a freak critical, which is actually physically impossible. Look at that. Yeah, zero stuff. So I would be surprised if they got a critical, actually. <laughs> well, after Gilliam missed four times in a row on a 96, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, my first time playing this, uh, I, uh, a cri there was this mercenary. I think this may actually be the reason why I hate them so much, but... Ah oh, no, I'll come back to that anecdote later on because cameo time. Ah yes, one of the main characters. <laughs> yeah, later on of course. Uh, yeah, this guy is Hector, and he's yeah. The reason why there's a big main music here is because of uh, little known fact. This is the prequel for uh, Fire Emblem Six: The Sealed Swords, which is the game that had Roy in it. Just for those who want, who really care, and. Um, yeah, Hector was a main character in that, so that's why he's got the big theme tune here, because the Japanese players are supposed to recognize him, but in, for us English players, we have absolutely no idea who this guy is. Yeah, like me, the first time I found him, I was like, okay, who are you and why are you raving to my face? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we can finally finish this guy off once for all, so... <laughs> uh. I'll be honest, that quote, it confused me a little bit the first time you said, the first, you're striking at air. I'm not actually here. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah. still doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, actually all he meant was, um, my other guys are carrying the boy's sister away. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I actually do get that, because if I didn't, I would be a nummy. <laughs> It still doesn't mean a lot. You're only striking there, or to be wrong, besides me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta take into account how literal the watcher thinks. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we now have this big introduction because it turns out the girl was saved by this man, Ellie Woods, who looks a lot like Roy, but isn't Roy, he's Roy's father. Let's just get that straight. <laughs> I would make a Star Wars reference, but it doesn't fit. Uh, I'm sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably just as well. <laughs> and it's, yeah, basically he's going to see a noble, as it, as it turns out, unlike Marcus Arfem, he's in a dick. <laughs> well, it's nice to know there's some good nobles out there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. 
considering Bixer be seems to betray them all as evil for some reason, I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> Um, yeah, Roy offers his assistance here, but not Roy. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> After all that time, I said... Oh, yeah, basically, <laughs> they're going to offer assistance, but don't, and that's the end of this part.